بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم دس از اے لیول بایولوجی نائن سیون ڈبل زیرو مارچ ٹوینٹی ٹو پیپر فور ٹو اینڈ دس از دا فورتھ ویڈیو اینڈ دس از گوئنگ ٹو بی ڈیلنگ وتھ کوشچن نائن اینڈ ٹین now looking at question 9 it says describe the biological species concept now this is again something new of the syllabus this isn't in the old syllabus so a biological species mean individuals within a population can breed or mate or reproduce to produce fertile offsprings and are reproductively isolated so basically it's a definition of a species but the biological species just makes it a little more uh, interesting but otherwise there's no other differences biological species is species definition so individuals within a population which can breed to produce fertile offsprings and are reproductively isolated. So basically, uh, wording has to be individuals within a population that can breed slash mate slash reproduce. The second point is to produce fertile offsprings. And the third point is are reproductively isolated from other species. So look at the three marks and then think of three points which you would give. So be careful, the marks is a very important uh, indicator for you, how much do you write in that. Suggest when the morphological species concept is, suggest when the morphological species concept is more useful than the biological species concept. Again, this is the new syllabus. Now, basically what is that? For organisms that do not breed sexually or asexual, or for fossil or extinct organisms. Morphological differences are easier to determine. And sometimes it is often not possible to observe reproductive behavior. Or you can say it's maybe it may, may, may take too long and not possible to make them to mate. So all these will come under why morphological species is better than morphological means just to look at them, the morphology, the appearance, and then decide the species. So the wordings will be for organisms that do not breed sexually. Uh, for extinct organisms, morphological differences are easier to determine. Or you can say not possible to observe reproductive behavior. Or you can say not possible to make them to mate. Then coming to part C of this question. Compare the characteristics of members of the domain Archaea with the characteristics of members of the domain Bacteria. And these are very straightforward questions. There's no ambiguity about it. Include similarities and differences. So now they want you to compare the domain Archaea with the members of the domain Bacteria. So three domains, Archaea, Bacteria, and Eukarya. So they want you to compare those, the two of them. So that wasn't very difficult. I think you can both you can do it very clearly. There are about nine mark scheme points. So you could have done any one of those. So when you look at the similarities, both are prokaryotes, both have circular DNA, both have 70S ribosomes, and both reproduce by binary fission. Now let's come to the differences. When you come to the differences. So the differences were bacterial cell wall is made of a peptidoglycan. Archaea is not made up of a peptidoglycan. So looking at the differences, the first one was bacterial cell wall made of a peptidoglycan. Archaea, no peptidoglycan. Bacterial cell membrane has ester-linked lipids, while the archaea cell membrane has ether-linked lipids. This is the point here which I've given you, and I've said this is one mark scheme point. Then the bacteria and archaea have different ribosomal RNA, this point here. And then bacteria do not have DNA with histones, while archaea have DNA with histones. So, so archaea is the one which is slightly a better bacteria, or you can see a more developed or a more smarter bacteria. It has better uh, apparatus uh, to deal with the situation that it is put in. Now coming to the last question, 10a, figure 10.1 shows the structure of two guard cells and name the structures labeled A, B, and C. Now that was a very, very easy thing. A, you know, is chloroplast. So A was chloroplast. What was B? B was vacuole. And what was C? C was a cell wall. Right? So you got your uh, three marks for that. Very easy three marks, I must say. Now, in B part of the question, it says, in times of water stretch, abscisic acid is released. This results in the closure of stomata to reduce water loss by transpiration. 
Describe the role of abscisic acid in stomatal closure. And that's four marks, and this is a total of seven marks. Remember your knowledge of abscisic acid. As abscisic acid has to bind to receptor on cell membrane, just like hormones in humans, they have to bind to receptors on cell membrane of the guard cell. Here in this case, of course, it's the guard cell. But if you were talking about insulin in humans, it is released by the pancreas, but it binds to receptors on the liver, liver cells. So proton pumps, in this situation, proton pumps are inhibited. Now this opens the calcium channels and calcium acts as a second messenger. Potassium diffuses out of the guard cells. Water potential of the guard cell increases. So water leaves the guard cells by osmosis. The guard cells become flaccid and the cell volume decreases. So the stoma closes. Now this was four marks and I'm sure this was a very easy four marks because you knew it that it's a chemical, it's a growth regulator, so bipsisic acid will bind to a receptor. How does a cell know when it responds to these chemical signals? These are very important syllabus point chemical signaling is, starts in the AS level and continues in the A2 level. So abscisic acid binds to receptor, proton pumps inhibited, opens calcium channels, calcium acts as a second messenger, potassium ions diffuse out of guard cells. Now these are eight points and you have to give me any four of them and uh, this is what you have to remember. It has to be, it can be in any sequence and it can be any four of them. Uh, that completes this paper and I hope this has been a helpful exercise. We have four videos on this paper. So please go through all of them and please do revise thoroughly your uh, paper four. But the more papers you do, that is a better practice than just reading the book time and time again. So more papers that you practice, you can please revise from the syllabus. The syllabus is a very important tool for you. If you don't use the syllabus, well, you're not going to be very successful. You have to use the syllabus and go through the syllabus point wise because books are sometimes have irrelevant material, sometimes do not have the required material. That completes this and thank you very much and thanks for subscribing and thanks for watching. This completes this paper. It is the last video on this paper.